Ooh, that looks tasty. Welcome, folks. Today, the Hungry Gamer is back with another mini review, and today we're talking about Mythwind from Open Owl Studios and designed by Brendan McCaskill and Nathan League. And I do apologize if I mispronounced those names. Now, the reason I'm doing a mini review of this is I didn't want to give away any spoilers. And it's not. It's hard for me to say that, because when you understand the game, it'll make a little more sense. But there are little story beats that I just, well, I just don't want to reveal, because I've enjoyed exploring it so much myself. But what you will see is just some video from a play session I had. It's not a playthrough I did, but just kind of a play session that I did, just so you can kind of get an idea of what things look like. I guess you could pause this and zoom in up there and see it, but you know, then you really want the spoilers, and okay, I'm, I got no problem with that. But so what this game is, is this is a sandbox life game. That's what I'm going with. And what I mean by that is, you're just living your life in this Mythwind Valley, trying to create a town, and you're either going to be the ranger, so you're you know a hunter, basically, or you're the farmer, or you're the artisan, or you're the merchant. And you're just kind of living your life. And each character is going to wind up playing their own minigame, a la Merchant's Cove, a la Free Radicals, and things like that. And at the time of recording this, I've played with three of the different merchants. I actually haven't gotten to play with the Ranger yet, but the new campaign is coming, and I just need to get this done. So I can't speak specifically to the Ranger, but I can speak to the other three, and I don't have the expansion that has a, a fifth character. But for example, what the farmer is doing is it's kind of a polyomino laying puzzle as you're putting down crops and getting those crops to flip over, and when the crops are flipped over, you're harvesting them and you're selling them, and you're constantly dealing with weeds growing back up, and every round, depending on the weather, you'll get different kind of bonuses. While the artisan, on the other hand, you are upgrading goods to do recipe fulfillment, but your recipes might need really, really good cloth, so you have to upgrade it multiple times. And so you're taking your actions to kind of upgrade these cloths and get more out of the bag, and it's a little bit of kind of a bag management, bag building system, and so on and so on to do your recipe fulfillment. But as you're doing these different mini games, there is a core central game that's going on. And every round, you're going to take a single town action. And as you're playing, you'll be clearing areas of forest, and they'll have a bonus that's kind of hidden under there, and building new buildings. And the buildings will take time to build, and you'll have to put your player piece on one of those spots to actually activate whatever the spot is. It might let you get different resources, it might let you get new workers. The workers are dice, and there's the orange dice, which are human townsfolk, and the blue dice, which are pixie dice. And depending on which types of actions you take, that then influences your personal player board. Because in addition to doing your own little minigame puzzle, you are also going to be taking actions on the left side of your mini board, which is where you're going to slot dice in. And depending on where you slot those dice, that'll give you a different action. But you're only going to be allowed to use certain dice depending on the action that you've taken on the main board. If that sounds a little bit confusing, it does sound confusing, but it doesn't play confusing. The reason I'm being so vague is there is a big honking stack of buildings that you can build in your town to do different things. So if I tried to tell you everything you could do, one, I wouldn't know because I haven't experienced all of it. And two, we'd be here for another 35 minutes just me going through each thing. What's important to know is as you're building things up, there is a tech tree that you're going down. You can't build this really powerful building until you've built something smaller down the road. So you're constantly balancing that. And you're balancing these different seasons that you're going to be playing through. And each season is, again, its own little deck of cards, and you're going to flip those out in a random order, and that's going to determine the weather. And you guessed it, depending on the character you're playing, depending on what the scenarios going on are, weather can affect different things. Certain patterns of weather, if they happen in that right order, may do something else kind of globally to everybody on the board, and so on and so on and so on. Yet, at the same time, you're also dealing with these events that are happening in the town itself. And this is where the story comes in. It's not a huge in-depth story, 
but there is story going on. As things are happening as you play through and as you make choices, that's going to put new cards into the event deck, the stories that you're going to be drawing from as you go, and you're slowly discovering this adventure of what's kind of going on in Mythwind. Yet, at the same time, you can also kind of just go adventuring and see what's out there. And there's also a bunch of cards that you're going to have there that, again, are going to have new cards shuffled in and out as you go through events, as you do different adventures, and so on and so on. So what you are hearing here is it really is a lot of kind of choose-your-own-adventure that's happening almost as a consequence of the mini game that you're playing as you're just trying to kind of build up the town and just experience this world. And to me, that's the key. Of uh, This is a game about just experiencing this world and experiencing these characters. So with that said, what do I like about this game? First, I have to start out and say the production is phenomenal. It just is beautiful to look at. It's exceedingly easy to pack up, to put away, to save your game, change characters. It is a triumph of board game packaging is what this game is. Now, and the next thing I'll say is each of the uh, each of the different characters, again, I've only played three out of the four, they play so differently. It's such a different experience every time. And it's so awesome to play through a year in game time and then just switch to a new character and have another character play through a year. And you can just switch back and forth whenever you want, and it's just delightful. I, I love that I can do that. And while you're doing that, the fact that the story is going on and is happening while you're playing is just enough that sometimes like, ooh, I really want to know what's happening next. So I really want to try to get to an event. So I really want to do this. Or I really want to be ready for this event to kind of finalize. Because sometimes an event comes out and you know something's going to happen later on. If you have these certain things, you're kind of rushing to get that done. And it's just really satisfying because you have a ton of calm play. It's just calm and lovely and nice and moments of tension. And then, ah, it's kind of calm again. You're just kind of doing your puzzle, trying to figure out the best way to do things. Super satisfying. Along with that, I'll say, the way that your characters get more powerful as you play is super satisfying. Because you start out, and it's hard to do things, but as you go, you're like, oh gosh, I need money. Well, that's simple. I'll just do this and this, and boom, I'm now flush with cash. Really, really clever. And it really does a great job of making you want to come back and play more. This reminds me of games like Sim City, and I don't know, I don't know about modern Sim Cities. I mean, like Sim City back in the day. I'm talking about in the '90s on the computer, where you weren't actually doing anything; you were just building. And this has that vibe. It's super addictive. It makes you just want to keep going, and keep playing, and try new things. Really, really well done. So, what are my quibbles with the game? Well, the main one is it's not really high stakes, and I think I'm probably two-thirds of the way through the storyline. And it's interesting. Stuff's happening. There's some bad stuff going on that we're trying to deal with. But this is not a save-the-world-feeling-vibe game. It's a, this is our life, and these are the challenges we're facing on the frontier, and we're going to do this together, and we're going to survive. And I, I think it's a lovely thing, but also, a lot of times, you just want to go save the world. And this is not that game. This isn't even a, a win. You, there's nothing to win. You just play. And so that really, really might not be for you. And I also think that this game just shines as a solo game. I mean, what a wonderful solo game. Honestly, I don't really have any interest to play the game with other people. Like, go away! Go away! Let me do this thing. I'm, I'm sure it's lovely playing with multiple players, but I have zero desire to. And you may or may not agree with me at the end of the day with how you'd like to play this game, but there, there's very few games I'm like, I only want to play this solo. If someone was interested, I don't want to play it with somebody else, and this is one of those games. And again, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I just think it's such an amazing solo experience. I don't want to tarnish that. And then the last thing I'm going to say is, and this is more along what I understand to be true about this game. Once you finish that storyline, the storyline is done. And you can keep on playing, but that is pretty much done. And you'll keep experiencing things, and there'll be events and stuff you can deal with, 
but that storyline is done. Can you reset the game? Absolutely. And if you reset the game, there will certainly be times you'll make different choices and do different things, but it's going to be done. It's going to be over. And that might not be attractive to you. Now, that said, I don't think that if you're really into this game, you are here for the story. I think you're here for the experience. That's what you're getting. This is a truly feels like an open sandbox Euro experience. So there you have it, folks. That is Mythwind. This was a game that I did not back. And they were kind enough to send me a core copy of the game to review. And I didn't back it because I just, I didn't understand. I was like, so there's, you're just going to play and it just, you just play? Why would I want to, I don't want to do that. I, I want to win. And boy, I was really wrong. It's, <laughs> it's just a delightful, delightful experience. And I am truly, truly enjoying it. And I just think that if this, if you are the type of person that you're just looking for a solo experience that you can set up and tear down like that, and it just truly shines as a solo experience just to play and enjoy and not feel any pressure, then this is really, really a game that you should check out. So there you have it, folks. That is Mythwind. As always, if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, share, maybe become a channel member. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.